what happens on the road to and then in the little village of Emmaus, brothers and sisters, is first of all not very spectacular, right? It's people taking a walk together. At the end of the Sunday, then they have dinner together, a nice supper. That's, of course, only, you could say, the outer shell, so to say. The outer shell of a story that is, you could say, loaded with religious and theological significance. An experience that will transform the lives of Cleopas and his companion. The two as they walk and as they then stay together with Jesus in Emmaus, they really find out the full significance of what had happened. As we go through these pages of the gospel, as they went through them, the death and then the resurrection of Christ first of all, becomes really clear to them what has happened, becomes clear, and increasingly only they get insight in what these events mean. An insight in what these events change in the world, very much mediated through the change that they bring about in themselves and then also in the other disciples and apostles. And all that goes together with how they see in a new light the relation between the old scriptures, which now we call the Old Testament, and what is the life, the mission, the death and resurrection again of Christ, which will be written down in the New Testament. And last not least, it dawns unto them, interestingly, in the evening of that day, how the Eucharist is now the preeminent way in which the risen Lord is present and can be recognized. And the key, at least one key, to all of this is the apparently slow and gradual change that is happening in the two disciples. A change that unfolds as they walk with Jesus on the road. It is at the same time a change of mind and a change of heart. And that indeed will be necessary. A change of mind and a change of heart in the disciples and in the apostles to get from where they were after Jesus, was die, after Jesus had died to what they would do. We see it very clearly in St. Peter in how he talks the acts of the apostles and how he will write in his letters how his life becomes indeed a path of life a way of life, instead of being a futile way, which would lead quite literally nowhere. And this is the challenge, of course, for us, and at the same time, the gift for us. And especially in these weeks that we now go through again, ever so slowly, and probably also gradually, these weeks of limitations and lockdowns that affect pretty much every aspect of our lives, including the life of the church herself. And we therefore need to ask ourselves whether we are ready, whether we're willing and open for that kind of change. And it needs to be that kind of change. Because being open to the change of others, 
is not really an openness. That's the mother of all closed-mindednesses. Openness is always my openness and my willingness to change. The big alternative, and in my perception wrong alternative that is out there, and that is also often in here, is that we are still stuck. Stuck in having all kinds of ex expectations on others. That's our first reaction. Comes out also in the fact that it's still very popular to just keep pointing to and blaming, you might say, our favorite politicians, both at home and abroad, while if you look carefully, there's actually very little difference between what the governments of various countries and provinces do around the world. There is also a slightly different aspect, the kind of tendency that we keep looking at what is happening and also at how people, which again would be the others, react to it as a kind of proof that I was right all along and that the future, the good future would be if everyone would think and act like me. And that does not only happen right through the political spectrum, but it happens right through the spectrum of society. A popular and less profoundly limited and limiting attitude. Cleopas and his companion show us the healthy alternative. And yes, first they need to realize, and they do realize, what happened in Jerusalem was actually really bad. Evil. It was actually even worse than they had thought and that they had realized as they were walking towards a mouse. And yet, Jesus explains to them that this degree of darkness was actually, as he calls it, necessary. This is how it had to be in order for the most radical change to come about. In order for it to become better than anyone, including the two, could have ever imagined. A similar transformation is for us still possible. In fact, it is also for us still necessary. Necessary for salvation. So we want to make sure that we are ready. Ready to enter into a similar, you could say, conversion. A conversion like the two disciples. Because then, we will also experience a similar revelation and a similar transformation. Amen.